Hey, welcome back everybody. Today is a great day because today is the day you're going to learn how to play Strange Brew by Cream, just like you hear it on the record. I've been wanting to do this lesson for a super long time. This is a very foundational, in my opinion, this is very foundational, excellent learning for um, classic rock guitar playing. I would say basically Eric Clapton schools us all on the very roots of pentatonic minor rock blues in this song. This is one of the solos that I heard when I was first learning how to play guitar that I knew it was accessible, I could get there, and I knew it taught me a bunch of things that I could then use and apply across the board. You hear these things in a lot of songs and it really helps your playing and I'm going to detail those here today. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I really appreciate if you jump down and click the subscribe button and ring the bell. It lets you know every time I do new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have jump links down in the description and you can see it in the horizontal red bar there. You can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see at any time and bypass any of my yapping. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's super thanks right below, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do here on YouTube. Love to see you there. And also there's some exclusive content on there as well. There's even a store with some fun guitar gear and the links for that are down in the description. Okay, Strange Brew. So I wanted to do this lesson for a long time um, just because I think it's an excellent, excellent um, lesson on electric rock blues. Um, but also because I wanted to do it right and I wanted to do it with a very specific piece of gear that I have not owned until now. And that is my 50 watt um, Marshall Plexi reissue, which I'm super stoked about. Um, I've got that running through four 25 watt greenbacks in the cabinet. I'm super excited. I just got this yesterday basically and I am dying to use this and this was the song that came to my head um, to do it. Um, I'll show you all the settings um, that I've got um, here and also I'm running it through the power, the Fryette power station attenuator just to bring it down to um, you know a workable volume because this amp is loud. That's the best attenuator on the market in my opinion. That one and the PS100 for whatever that's worth. Okay, so let's get to it. So in terms of tone, guitar, so I, I believe uh, I believe Clapton used his SG. He had a 64 SG um, uh, that he used on these Disraeli Gears sessions, which is the album where this song is from. Um, this is the closest thing I have to that. So I've dialed out my third pickup. It's basically just an SG. Um, and uh, so there's basically two sort of guitar tones going on. Um, one is, to my ear, it's a treble pickup, which is the rhythm, um, the, the rhythm part, which we'll talk about. Um, and then the lead, I think it's more on the neck pickup, to my ear. I mean, who, who knows? Things get EQ'd in the studio, but that's what I'm going to go with for, um, for what I'm doing, okay? I've got my tone on the treble pickup. I've got my tone rolled back to about seven. And I'm going to roll it off even more um, till about five or so on the on the leads when I'm playing the the uh, neck pickup. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the rhythm guitar part because that's super quick. Um, there's only a few chords there. Okay, there is also on the recording there's a good amount of reverb um, going on there. So I've tried to approximate. So I've tried to approximate that. Um, um, utilizing the effects loop on there. Okay, and um, so the chords, right? We're in a blues, so we are pretty sure that's gonna be a one, four, five progression. One being the root note, which is A. Four being your uh, fourth in the scale. One, two, three, four, right? A, D, and E is your fifth. Um, and so there's just a couple variations on the chords that are used in that spot, okay? So I believe the one chord is actually just a straight A bar chord. I don't even think it's an A7. I'm listening, I always played it as an A7, um, but I think actually it's just a straight A to my ear. 
The four chord is a D9. Okay, you'll see the chord chart here. That's your four chord, okay? <clears throat> now, when you get to the five chord, it's, it's a, uh, well, it's the Hendrix chord, isn't it? It's, uh, it's like an uh, E9, but it's a minor. It's got the minor. It's got that note thrown on there, right? Right? And then when you come back to the four on the way down, you have that exact same shape at the D spot and then back to your A. Okay, so those are the chords. The little riff, how he joins them together, um, it's a little bumpy, but it goes like this. So it's just, that's what he's doing. It's a hammer on, then you pick it, and you hammer on on the D string. And you do that between each chord. And so again, the chord sequence is A, riff, D, 9, riff sequence, back to your A. Now we're going to go to our minors. Make sure you catch that note. And that's it. So those are all the chords, and that's really all that repeats throughout the whole song. There's no change, there's no bridge, there's sort of no difference um, that happens throughout the whole thing. The only other chord that's involved is the last chord of this song, and that's one that I don't, I don't see anybody sort of calling that out. Um, it's different. It's not a straight uh, A7 or anything like that. So that last chord, based on my little bit of research and ear, um, I believe that's an, it's an A9 seventh, I believe is the, is the terminology for the chord. Um, here's what the shape is, okay? You can see it over my shoulder. Um, the bass note hits a G. I'm not sure if the guitar does as well, but I'm going to thumb over to do that. Um, but the chord sounds like this. Okay, it's a, if you think about, an, let's break this down, let's, you think about an A7, like a standard A7 chord, all right? The key parts of that A7 chord, if you're thinking about the bar chord, are these notes here. Right, you have your dominant seven, you have your, or your major, or minor seven, I guess you call it, your major third, and your fifth right combined with the root note that gives you a seventh right but that major third isn't in there on that last note so i know it's not an a regular a seventh i don't even think it's an a seven where you mute it because i'm hearing these other notes i'm hearing that too so an a nine involves the adding the b note you can also sort of think about it like that, right? But that high version of the note isn't in there. So this is the, I believe this is the phrasing that you hear at the end. It's a very odd chord. It's super cool. Um, it's dissonant. Um, it's not as happy as like the Hard Day's Night chord, you know? Which that's not even technically correct either, but it's close. But yeah, it's, right? Um, and when we get to this, when we talk about the solo, I'll tell you why that's 
also super interesting and dissonant because the note that he ends the solo, the little solo riff at the end of that, doesn't technically fit over that chord, but you play them together and it sounds awesome. Okay, so that's it. So your one chord is an is a A, your fourth is a D9, your fifth is a E9 minor, I believe. Same shape back. Now you're adding the minor on the D and back to your A. And the only other closing chord is this one. You could also leave that thumb open and just hit them all. I'm just not sure I hear that E note. But there you go. So let's talk about the lead. All right, the lead sections, all interesting. And I think they're super important when you're thinking, if you're learning sort of electric blues um, and uh, there's basic patterns that Eric Clapton uh, lays out here. And so much of what he did in the 60s for me is it's almost like the template for everybody around in the 60s and moving forward when they're playing guitar it was sort of like you learn eric clapton riffs that's what you do um and this is one that really sort of sets the template very well okay so let's talk about the intro okay so this is all minor pentatonic blues and uh the intro and my i believe the intro is played um at this position you're starting at the A note on the B string on the 10th fret, okay? And you're gonna hammer onto that. Okay? You throw in that little bit of major just at the very end, right? Just a little. Everything else is minor, but every once in a while you throw in just a, a hint of the, of the major, which is just great, okay? Right? And then you end it with... I think he hits that major there too. Right? So, really slow. Second part of the phrase goes... end it with that is a super important phrase if you have not learned that before that is one of the most important rock blues phrases that there is because it allows you to move up and down from this position to this position that We'll talk about the box, the blues box, you know. So that's that blues box. Then here's this blues box. Right. But sliding up to that. That is a super important riff. And it's built into this. Okay. So again, that second part. So you're just making, you're sliding up and you're making a little part of a C. It's, all, it's like a C major triad, really, but it's related to an A minor. It's all, it's the same. And you give that little seventh at the end. Right? So let's do those two together. During the verses, the sort of pattern that he follows is he'll play a little lead phrase when you go to the four chord, and then he sings a little bit, and then he, it's sort of a call and an answer, and then he answers it with the guitar, then he finishes with the, the Strange Brew lyric, and then he all, always ties it off with a little riff. So here, here's what I mean, and they're all sort of variations of this, right? So you'll, you'll have your verse chords. We're going to go to the four. To you. 
And then here's where he'll play a little phrase. Right? Or something like that. But it's all based off of the... It's all based off of that, you know, minor pentatonic box. And then he sings again. What kind of fool are you? Right? So he's bending up to the... Or some variation of that. And then he finishes the lyric. Strange brew. Girl, what's inside of you? Of you? And then it's always... Or a variation of that. But it's always that bend, you know? So, if you're looking to mix those parts in there, um, just stick in that position and follow that sort of template. And that's what he's doing. Something like that, right? All right, now let's talk about the solo. So the solo, so great. What I love about this era of Clapton playing, like number one, I love the whole sort of either Les Paul or SG and a Marshall, you know, just fat, dark tone. Um, but he always does these little, you know, he's always throwing these things in there. And there's a couple little places where it happens um, in here too. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's take it into the solo. So he closes off that next verse with the normal sort of... Right, one of that turnaround riff, right? But now we're going to come up to this position. So we're in our, again, minor ten, uh, pentatonic blues. Um, we're in, think about an A minor chord up here. You're sort of building that uh, pentatonic scale around that. Right? So you have this classic blues thing here. So he's going to come in with this awesome two or a two and a half step bend. <laughs> All the way up there. Normally when you're bending this note, you always just bend it two frets. Right? But he bends it all the way up to... I think up to there. Or just approaching it. Right? Then we're back to our normal. Right? Stay there. Pull it off, right? So that's a little different. And we're going to come back to our sliding up to that C, right? And we're going to pull it back down to our root A, A minor pentatonic, right? Right? That little phrase at the end making an A seventh with a major on. You slide that up, right? Do that because you're going to climb up to your your uh, pentatonic box up here again. And then this is interesting. So this is normally, again, what you normally hear and do from this position is you get the bend, you know, this bend. You know? not going to do that here. What he does is he bends this note to here. So it's an index finger bend. You make you make your you know your index finger on 13 on the B string and your middle finger on 14 on the G string like you're making that A minor chord. But what you're going to do is use your index finger and bend up this way. It creates a different sound. If you were to if you were to do it with your normal bending strategy. I mean, you could do it. It sounds a little different if you do it with your index finger. It sounds to my ear, that's what he's doing. And you 
finish it off down here. Here you go. Okay, so I'll run through it, all of it together, okay? Just artistry. All right, so it runs through another sort of verse section. And he has his little fills. So that's gonna carry on the same sort of verse pattern. Now there's a little outro section where it does a little variation, where it's, it's over a, I guess, a, a, a repeated chorus kind of thing. Strange. So that's a nice bend. You can either do it from this position here or which I think is a little easier and it sort of sounds more right to me. So you're just playing around in minor, minor A pentatonic. Either in that position or, or that position. And then the big finale. Strange girl, girl what's inside of you? And the little riff is. Okay, so slow down. It's just blueprint minor pentatonic blues. Now, remember we talked about that last chord, right? The last chord is that, right? Which has that B note on it, the ninth. But Eric on his lead ends it with this note. So you've got and going on, which is cool. And that, my friends, is Strange Brew. Did you like what you saw? If you did, I appreciate it if you clicked subscribe and ring the bell. Ring the bell lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this lesson. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do a similar lesson um, like this. So, love to hear from you. Okay, until next week, take care, everybody. <laughs>